guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a Cobb access port on a 2022 WRX, but this is generally going to be a how to install a Cobb access port on any year vehicle. And we're going to go over everything you need to know, some tips and tricks, some things people don't talk about and just all into it. But we're going to get straight into the video and get this thing installed and uh, let's hop in the car. So we have our Cobb access port already mounted here. We're using a Matic magnetic mount. I'm going to make a separate video on why you want to do this. We do have our hood popped. It's just like 95 degrees out. I'm cooking inside the car. So you're welcome for making this video as it's so hot. But we're going to start by taking our Cobb access port and plugging it in. You're going to use the provided cord, plug it into your OBD2 sensor, which is down by your feet, and then you're gonna have this cord, and this is gonna plug into your Cobb access port, and you're gonna do that right now. And we're plugged in. Cobb access port's gonna boot up. Press continue. And then we have the option to install. We're gonna press install. Now we're gonna move our ignition to the on switch. Now we're gonna, it says, please confirm that your vehicle matches this vehicle. We're gonna hit continue. And now we have our choice of maps. Now for this process, we're gonna turn our AC off. We're gonna turn our fan down. We're actually gonna turn our radio completely off and we're gonna make sure our headlights are off as well. We're basically making sure that all external power is low. In this case, we're gonna go down to the tune that we need, this tune right here, and we're gonna press OK. We're gonna hit OK. You should put a charger on, but we're gonna run it anyways. I did run the car beforehand, just FYI, to let the battery charge, but um, we're pretty, we're fine there. We're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna wait for this to go. So I'm gonna put the camera down and we'll check back in when it's up to 100% or getting close. It can take a long time. And you just wanna make sure while you're doing this that you don't touch the plug, you don't take the power off. If you turn the power off or something goes wrong here, you can severely damage your ECU. We're 99%. Took about five minutes and then it says, there we go. Please turn off and leave the ignition in off position to start the completion of the initial reflash. So we're gonna do that. We're in off position. And then we're gonna hit okay. And this is gonna be faster here. Then we're gonna turn it to on position. Okay, final reflash, off position, on position. All right, we're going to turn it to the off position and then wait 15 seconds before we start the car. So now we're going to wait 15 seconds. It's been 15 seconds, so we're going to hit continue. And then we're going to start the car. Let's try that one more time. And the car is on. We're gonna put our access port up on our little mount here. We're all set up. And then a few things. So I'm actually gonna be doing some data logging right now, so I'm not gonna so I'm not gonna configure the gauges. But if you drive a WRX, especially a VBWRX, just something to note, it does take some time for your front O2 sensor and your um, ACVS to uh, like initialize or re um, kind of reinitialize or re ready up after reflashing your car. So I always recommend letting your car idle for five or 10 minutes and then driving, I don't know, 15 to 20 city miles, kind of mixed mileage before you do data logging, before you tune, before you drive it hard, any of those things, just so you get all your stuff readied up and reinitialized and then you're good to go. So that's exactly how you start a Cobb access port. What I am gonna do now is I'm gonna put my hood down. Um, definitely don't need to do that, but it's something that you can do depending on your conditions and weather conditions, but especially if you're doing like idling and that kind of stuff, just makes sense to get as much air in there as possible, especially if it's a windy day. Um, we're gonna let the car run for a little while and then we're gonna drive some uh, miles just to get it all set up and going and then we'll get everything set up and I'm gonna do some data logging. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. That's exactly what you do, it's super simple. I just wanted to make the video so you guys can understand how basic it is and just a few like tips and tricks like driving your car, 
don't do power, sit here, don't move around, you know, all those things. Don't let this thing get unplugged while you're installing it, but that's the step-by-step -step process. There's nothing else you need to know. I'll see you guys in the next video.